In these uncertain economic times, it's easy to be worried about protecting your wealth, your hard-earned savings, and your family's financial future. Plunging interest rates, the devaluating dollar, and political unrest constantly threaten what you have worked hard to earn and all that you own. That's why now it's more important than ever to protect your assets and have the money you need to make your dreams come true. Welcome to the Global Wealth Fortress Report with successful global entrepreneur and wealth preservation expert, Joel Nagel. Joel's helped thousands of people just like you protect what you have so that you can make even more and make your every dream come true. So, sit back and enjoy Joel Nagel's offshore expert advice on how you can live the good life at a great price, where the sun never sets on your financial fortress. Hello, this is Carter Clues, Carib Carter from the Offshore Club. That's offshore.club. Uh, and since Joel's the co-chairman of it, I know he won't mind my saying that. And I am here with one, really one of the most important programs we do at the Offshore Club, and that's Joel Nagel's weekly podcast, uh, Wealth Fortress Report. Uh, Joel is the nation's leading asset protection attorney, and so this is a this is a tremendous opportunity for every member of the Offshore Club, Joel. So thank you. For, for this weekly podcast. And thank you for being with us today. Well, thanks, Carter. It's good to, good to be with you. And I, I think today I understand, um, but we have a sister organization and Joel is one, one of the folks in charge of that too, thank God, the escape artist. And I understand, Joel, you have a article coming out in Escape Artist's great magazine, Insiders Magazine, tomorrow on very, very timely on asset protection at this time when our assets are so imperiled by the Biden regime. And you have an article where you, you talk about the steps people need to take now, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, just by background, um, you know, I'm not really running escape artists and don't run the offshore club. I'm not really involved in the management or operations, but I try to participate as much as I can. And um, for Escape Artist Insider, which is our premium, you know, subscription uh, magazine, it's really very, very high quality. I know you write a lot of articles for it as well. I right. do write a monthly column, and uh, this month I tried to, uh, you know, talk a little bit about things that you can still do this year, because right, we're sitting at the beginning of the last month of the year. So, with 30 days left in the year, what can you really do? Uh, to, to protect, preserve, and pass on your wealth. And I really focused in a lot on what's going on in Washington. Um, even though the, the, the bill concerning the budget, spending, taxation, even though that hasn't been passed yet, uh, we're starting to see consensus emerging. Um, you know, the consensus really only has to be within the, the Democratic Party because uh, if they keep their sort of more moderate flank in check, like, you know, Joe Manchin, for example, they don't really, they don't really need Republicans to push through, you know, any of this. And I imagine if uh, the, the, the tax bills that, that President Biden wants go through, they will have little or no support from, from Republicans. So, you know, what they're really doing is, again, trying to hold their, their flank in check, pass out lots of goodies to everybody involved so that they'll, uh, fo you know, follow the party line and, and vote for it. And, you know, if, if push comes to shove, they can have Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, you know, give the, the deciding vote in the, in the Senate. Um, we haven't seen that since Ronald Reagan was president and George Bush Sr. was vice president. So it's been a long time since uh, vice president's been asked right. to in right. particular, something important like this, like a tax overall bill. But, but yeah, that that was the crux of the article, and you know, I'm happy to share some of that insight with you today. If you know, if that's what we want to talk about. I think it's very, very, very important because, folks, let me tell you, you know, my background is politics. Forty years, that thank God, pretty high levels in Washington. They're going to pass this bill. The Republicans are going to cave. Uh, right now, uh, McConnell and uh, Schumer in the back room. 
put together how can we force this on the American people. I'm t it's just the way it is. I know these. I, I actually know these people. Uh, so it's coming. So what Joel's article is vitally important to everyone watching this program. You really need to protect your assets now more than ever. So, Joel, I think you said you, you, you focused on seven major areas of asset protection. Is that right? Yeah. And, and again, I, of course, I don't have the crystal ball about what the final bill is going to look like. And I think you're right. I mean, we're going to talk over the next few minutes about the things that we feel pretty sure are going to be in there. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, you know, it, there's going to be reconciliation between the House and the Senate. And literally, you're going to have a group of people appointed by Speaker Pelosi, um, by Chuck Schumer, Senator Schumer. And, you know, once they have their internal consensus, they're going to be sitting around a uh, a boardroom, 10 guys who you don't even know because they're not elected officials. Yeah. You know, these are nameless, faceless bureaucrats who are going to basically put together the final the final bill. So, you know, I'm telling you what I think is going to be in it. I believe there could be a surprise or two, you know, a, a last minute surprise. And, and largely because um, the, the proposals that are coming forward now raise revenue, but they don't, they do not raise revenue enough to meet the targets of the bill itself. So, you know, they're supposed to be neutral. If they're gonna spend $2 trillion, they have to figure out how to raise $2 trillion. And they're just not doing that. So yeah, despite yeah. The, the increases, the tax increases, um, you know, that's that's what's gonna happen. I know last week we talked a little bit about, about these, um, the provisions in the bill, and I don't wanna reiterate those, but, you know, this is more about steps that you can take right now to, protect and preserve wealth for yourself. And uh, first and foremost, you know, as we come to the end of the year, frequently, you, you know, business people are figuring out how to delay, defer income, like, hey, I've made a lot of money this year, I'm going to push income off into next year, uh, if they can, uh, maybe prepaying their expenses. You know, I, I know of clients that will, you know, maybe write a rent check for the for January or February or March, you know, in the in the current year, because they're trying to increase their expenses, they're trying to decrease their income. This year, this go round, I'd say it's almost exactly the opposite. You know, if you have the ability to pay yourself uh, money, pay more tax now. Do it because okay, uh, no, matter very good. Now, well, no matter what you pay now, it's going to be less than what you're going to pay come January one. So, you know, and so, yeah, and then you push your expenses off. You know. Obviously, there's things you have to pay, uh, but if you have bills sitting on your desk on December 31, instead of writing a check, you know, let the year close out, start the new year off paying um, more of your expenses next year, income this year, expenses next year, pay a little more tax now, save a lot of tax next year, you know, with that. So that's that's one thing. You know, that's advice. Advice. Thank you. Good. Excellent you advice. Pay the income now. Yeah, that's on the earned income side. And, and by the way, you know, the, the notion that these tax increases are only going to affect people that make over $400,000 is a complete lie. Um, the, the bill that's coming through now includes a surtax on um, self-employed people. And there's no, there's no floor or ceiling on it. You know, it's going to be like, a, like another Obama, you know, tax where, you know, we, this little 3.8% tax that, that comes through for everyone. So anybody that works for themselves, that's very good advice because you will pay, no matter what you're paying now, you will pay at least 3.8% more. And, you know, and if you make a lot of money, you're going to pay more than that because they've, they're adding several additional tax brackets uh, to, to high net worth people, the people that really do make, you know, that, that kind of half million, million dollar type income. And then at five and 10 million, they're, you know, they're kicking in these uh, millionaire taxes, which I'm sure we'll talk about another time. But let, let, me parenthetic, let me parenthetically say something here, folks. Please, what Joel's saying is vitally important because please do not be deceived into thinking that if some tax is eliminated in the Senate bill because McConnell acts like he demanded it, that it's really gone. The agreement behind close people, I've been in these negotiations. The agreement will be, Okay, Chuck, uh, eliminate that one because we know the House will put it back in and then we'll go ahead and pass it. So please don't be deceived by what comes out of the Senate. It's going to come back to the House much worse. That, that the fix is in on that. 
Yeah, no, exactly. I agree with that. I mean, you know, they under public pressure, for example, they took out the the bit about reporting on financial accounts over six hundred dollars. That it's only a matter of time. It'll either be this bill or, you know, in the very near future, that'll come back in and some form, you know, maybe instead of $600, yep. it's $800. But the point is they want to have access to every American's bank account. That's right. It has nothing to do with taxes. I mean, it's under the guise of, you know, sort of tax enforcement, the way FATCA was for foreign accounts. Uh, but there's already, you know, 1099s and, you know, there's already, the banks already report on any interest income you get, all, all of that type of stuff. They already have that information. So just wanting to know, Everybody that has more than six hundred dollars in an account is nothing but having mass control over the population. So, anyway, so so we talk about income, you know, kind of trying to shift more income to this year. I, I would say the same thing about your capital gains. Um, okay. you no, know, again, a lot of times at year end, people are saying, "Hey, I've got some dogs. I'm going to sell them. You know, I'll, I'll take my tax write off, my losses this year." I'll, you know, push my gains in the next year. Nope, this time around, exactly the opposite. If you have some gains, you know, and you're you're happy with where you are with those gains, take them, take the gains. Good. You know, capital gains tax right now is 20%. It's never, ever going to be this low again. You know, Pre President Biden's initial proposal was to put capital gains taxes higher than ordinary income, higher than the top bracket. They, uh, you know, they, they, they were, um, you know, pushing for... 43, 45% capital gains tax, which is similar to what it is in Canada, for example. Capital gains taxes in Canada are as high as the, the top brackets. So they are talking about doing that. And then, of course, you know, it, through the House and Senate committees, it's been watered down a bit. Uh, but I think we're, we're looking at a capital gains rate somewhere between 25 and 27%. So that's going to be, um, you know, a big tax increase for people who you know, are retired and people who are sort of living on their uh, investment. So again, you know, take, I mean, honestly, if, if, if the, the other side to it, you know, I'm, I'm talking from the tax side, but if right. you want to think about it from the financial side for a minute as well, you know, let's assume mid December, they come out with a bill and they pass it. And then everybody realizes, Hey, January one capital gains taxes are going up. Well, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, a lot of people are going to come up with the same idea and they're going to sell. Well, if everybody starts selling at once, what do you think is going to happen to the market? So, exactly. you know, this, this tax bill could not only, you know, it could trigger a huge sell off in the markets. So that might be another reason why if you're getting this message now, you might say, hey, if I have some gains, let me take them off the table now. You can even imagine a scenario where you take your gains now, pay a little more capital gains tax. But then when the markets crash, which they undoubtedly will at some point, you know, now you've got more cash you can buy back in at, at, at lower prices. So it's it's about saving tax. It's about making money. It's about both. And, um, you know, I don't have a Great. I don't have a crystal ball to say that the markets Great. are definitely going to sell off. But, you know, just think about it. You know, you think about it from a personal perspective. If you know January 1 tax rates on on cap gains are going to go up. A lot of people are going to have the idea to sell by December 31. And, you know, we had, I think last week, Friday, we had one of the biggest sell-offs in right. the market and nobody was even talking about it, right? So I could I could see, you know, um, the kind of sell-off happening again where the the automatic brakes have to come on to close the markets or, or slow them down, shut them down temporarily because, you know, they can't keep up with... Um, you know, with uh, the, the orders to sell, there's no, you know, orders to buy. So, so that's, that's two major moves. Right. I think uh, yeah. uh, you said you had se seven in the article again, folks, let me reiterate, this is an insiders magazine. If you go to escapeartist.com, subscribe to that magazine, this article, I mean, being there, I have an article coming out uh, for your escape route. Uh, and so, We've covered two of the uh, of of the moves you suggest people make in in your article. What's next, Joel? Well, I don't know. I can't, I can't give all the punch lines because people. <laughs> or oh, they won't subscribe. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's a really great magazine. In fact, they have a promotion now where yeah. um, if you subscribe, you can get all the back issues. So not only yeah. from writers like me, but you and you know, there's twenty 
plus other real experts in the international offshore field. So normally they don't give people access to the previous, um, you know, to the past issues, but that's a promotion they're doing now through Christmas. So yeah. I would, it's a great time to, to get in there and you can also get access to things like the conference we just did in Las Vegas, you know, to those recordings and things like that. So, Good. but, you know, carrying yeah. on, carrying on with your question, um, the, the, you know, those were tax specific, I think, you know, going forward into some of the other items, uh, people really do need to think a little bit more about um, wealth preservation. I think there's a lot of fears right now, even mainstream media is starting to talk about inflation. They're recognizing it. Of course, the government is willfully underreporting what it really is. Um, and inflation is not only the sum of money printed, but the velocity of that money passing through the system. Exactly. And, and during COVID, when everybody was staying at home, you know, they were printing all this money, depositing in people's accounts, but nobody was really spending it. Now people are spending it, you know, and, and that's causing this, it's a mathematical formula, you know, the amount times the velocity to increase dramatically. And, and so, you know, the government will tell you inflation's running at 6%. Um, I saw a show here in, in my hometown of Pittsburgh that was looking at, you know, a basket of of Thanksgiving products from the turkey to the cranberry, to the stuffing, it was about 300%, you know, increased in, in one yep. year. And, you know, most, um, if you go to, um, I think the, the best one is shadow statistics. Shadowstats.com, uh, you know, this. shadow yep. stats, you know, I think they're saying that realistically inflation is running around 20%. So, Absolutely. you know, so inflation's on the one hand, you know, the dollar is going down that's that's sort of the you know it's a seesaw right so as inflation goes up the value of the dollar is going down uh in relation to a basket of other things that's why in dollar terms those things increase whether it's gold oil real estate you know everything's going up but everything else going up is you know symbolic of the the value of the dollar going down that's what's really happening yeah, the price yeah. is increasing, but the reality is the better way to describe it is to say the value of my money is going down. So if you are, think about it in, in that way, then you need to, you know, look for ways to for to protect that wealth, and it can be in the market, can be right. If if the inflation or devaluation is occurring at twenty percent, well, then you need something that's going to give you twenty percent return in order just to stay even, right? Yep. So yes, there's probably some good stocks that'll do that. Uh, but a lot of my clients are moving into alternative investments right now because they fear what we just talked about in the, in the last point, which is there's gonna be some general sell-off you know, in the stock market. So people are looking at gold, they're looking at you know the cryptocurrencies, they're looking at hard assets like real estate, gemstones, you know, those types of products. And then some fixed uh, um, products like insurance-based products that have a, a particular yield associated with them. Again, looking for you know 10 plus percent kind of yields, which again, if if your yield goes up 10 percent and your dollar goes down 20 percent, you're you're still behind. But you know if you keep your money in dollars, you're guaranteed to lose. If you yeah. keep your money in yeah, things, like U.S. Treasuries. I mean, the U.S. Treasury, the interest rates like it's under 2%. So I'm going to buy a, uh, an investment for 30 years that's going to pay me 2% a year, you know, when inflation is running, you know, 10 times that. I mean, you're just guaranteed to lose money. I mean, who who really wants to do that? So again, but I'm not- if you, keep it, if you keep it in a savings account, I think it's a 10th of 1%. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So what, what, what about- well, you're an expert on sure. Let me maybe an off the wall question. What about investing in offshore real estate? Well, again, um, I'm I'm not an investment advisor, but yeah. I can see a lot of clients going into that direction. You know, the U.S. markets are are frothy and overvalued. Uh, there are other parts of the world, even traditional stocks and bonds, they're going into because they feel the markets are undervalued and the currency is undervalued. So if you get a 10 percent rise, for example in the Malaysia uh, stock exchange and 10% increase in their currency vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. Well, there right. you go. Now you're, now you're back to that kind of 20% number. Same thing with real estate. You know, I mean, if, um, if you're trying to buy real estate where I am here in 
Pittsburgh or probably most places in the country, certainly hot areas like Florida, where it's just, you know, going up and up and up. It's, you know, you get into these crazy valuations, but you go to some place like, you know, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Belize, Panama, you go to these countries where you can, you know, the dollar is still getting you a lot. Um, and, and, and so now you've got this, you've traded your dollars guaranteed to go down with a finite asset land that is really almost guaranteed to go up. So, you know, th that's definitely an area where a lot of our clients are, are looking right now. And, you know, it can serve other purposes too. You know, one of the things I talk about is planting your, your plan B flag and, and getting residency somewhere else. And what does that have to do with asset protection? Well, the most important asset you have is yourself. So, you know, um, people ask me all the time, like, hey, didn't you slow down during COVID? No, never once, never once. I think I made, you know, during an 18 month period, over 20 trips back and forth across the Atlantic, yep. similar amounts of trips back and forth to Latin America. I mean, I had the right documents. I had visas. I had passports. I had the ability to go where I needed to go. And and um, most people didn't. So I think it was a wake up call. You know, we get more and more people calling every day saying, hey, where, where's a fast, easy, inexpensive place to get a, a visa? Or I want to buy property somewhere where I'm, as part of the deal, I'm going to get qualify for residency or even citizenship, like in a lot of the little Caribbean islands, you know, if you buy property above certain value, you know, you can qualify for citizenship immediately. So people are are looking at doing that as part of their, you know, plan B. What would you say? I, I'm glad you're addressing this because I've gotten several emails from people saying, what are the best uh, central South American countries for uh, a second residency, a permanent residency? Um, if you had to pick the top three Joel, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you had to pick the top three, what would you say they are right now? Well, um, you know, for residency, I, I do like Belize. Um, it's English speaking. You know, a lot of my clients, they don't maybe maybe they don't speak Spanish. So they feel very comfortable in Belize. It's a English speaking, English common law country. Um, you know, if you make an investment um, there, you you really don't have to spend any time there to maintain your residence, but you have it. If you want to live there 365 days a year, you can. So Belize would be on my list. You know, Panama has changed its rules a lot recently um, and increased the, the, the investment amount, but the friendly nation visa is still, you know, one of the ones that I would look at. Um, El Salvador has immediately jumped into the fray with, you know, the, the whole new Bitcoin adoption right. as legal currency. And uh, they have a um, uh, an investor visa where if you invest, I think it's three Bitcoin. So that's um, roughly, you know, $170,000, $180,000, depending on the price of Bitcoin today. Um, so you invest in a property at that level, you can qualify for residency there as well. That's on the residency side. Then on the citizenship side, the countries where you can sort of jump to immediate citizenship, they're all basically the Caribbeans. There are some other countries too in Europe, like Bulgaria. I mean, we could probably do a whole show on on some of these countries, but right. um, come back to your question, you know, the top ones. I, I really like St. Lucia. They've been very, very active during COVID. They've made it easy for people to qualify, to work through the process remotely. You know, they'll do interviews over a Zoom call like this. Um, you know, it's taking about three months to get citizenship, which you can't really do it any faster than that by the time you do background checks and things like that. So I really like St. Lucia. I really like Dominica. Dominica has Dominica. the Dominica has the least expensive real estate. It's just slightly over two hundred thousand dollars. That's not a payment like it is in other countries. That's an investment. So you're buying something that's yours and you're you know, you're picking up a citizenship. Um, Dominica is a is a wonderful country, very unique, and and whereas most of the Caribbean islands are flat, you know, Dominica is the top of a mountain, top of a volcano, really, an in inactive volcano, and it has a lot of very unique, you know, flora, fauna, birds, things like that, and um, it's it's very sparsely developed. So if you really like nature, uh, Dominica is is one for that, and then Nevis yeah. Saint Kitts is sort of the granddaddy. They've been in the second passport business now for almost 30 years. Um, again, it's a little bit more expensive than the other two places I mentioned, but um, all three of the passports are, are pretty solid. And again, you skip residency, go straight to citizenship, 
then you can be there as much as you want or as little as you want. Yeah, the, the, Dominique, I just did a piece. I, every episode of Coffee with Carib Carter, I do the $1,000 list in Caribbean. And I just talked about an incredibly uh, affordable piece of property in Dominica. And one of the things I like, there are only 78,000 people there and the annual income, and I always look at this at countries, is only 9,800 a year. So folks, if, if your social security check is 2,000, you're going to live pretty darn well in a country where the average income is 9,800 bucks a year. So yeah. I, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Great country, wonderful country. There's a very funny video, by the way, you can watch it at uh, Offshore Club, uh, where it, they interview the people of Dominica about how boring it is there. <laughs> and it's just, I mean, it's delightful. They say, yeah, yeah, we, we are we are boring. <laughs> Well, I have a, and which I have a is good. Yeah, I have a client that's a big ornithologist, a bird person, right. and they love just going there, and that's what they do. They yeah. go out in the woods and hang out with their binoculars all day, and get very excited about birds coming by. And you know, I'm glad they like it. It's not my cup of tea, but um, you know, it's um, being out in nature is certainly something I do do love. And yeah. Dominica has also been ranked one of the top islands in the Caribbean from a dive perspective from a beach perspective fishing you know yeah, if you, you like being on or around the water it's it's tremendous tremendous place all right we're almost out of time but let me ask you a question that that i've received after you know we talked about the uh, pw25 president suite 25 and several of the people have asked me when can i get the videos from pw25 so what what's the latest update on that joel yeah, um, please ask me again next week. I, I think that's happening this week. Good. Um, I think that they're going to do uh, some kind of promotion in conjunction with the skate artists and the holidays. So there'll be a couple of uh, opportunities for people to, through various subscriptions, to get access to those. And you know, we certainly want to make them available. It's it's not as great as being there in person. It's not as great as um, doing the, the, the virtual registration where you can participate, ask questions and things like that. But all of the content is there. I mean, you have about 25 hours of very serious content from, you know, almost 20 speakers, uh, including the keynotes like Ron Paul, you know, guys like Porter Stansberry and people that are, you know, very difficult to, to get their, get with them and get their insights. So you get a lot of wisdom from those. And yeah, I'll try to check on that between now and next week. And hopefully I'll have a better answer for you next week. And maybe by then you'll already be pitching it on offshore.club and, and um, you know, and you won't need to ask me, but uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll see what I can do. Well, that's great. And folks, I think they'd make, I think the videos would make a great Christmas present for anyone who wants to uh, protect their assets and, and where think and hear a little bit about where to invest their money and then find out what's going on in this country that makes it so both of those things are vital right joel yeah yeah absolutely okay. and uh right. i'll be next week i'll be down in sunny belize for our uh interview and uh um you know i'm looking forward to getting down there there's always a lot going on we have a number of projects we're trying to finish up down there before the holidays uh so i'll be talking to you from uh, beautiful sunny san pedro next next week and I will be sitting in freezing York, Pennsylvania. So there hey, we go. Life is not fair. Yeah, we'll, do that. we'll do the show on the road. <laughs> All right. Thank you very, All very right. much. Great show. Great advice, folks. Thank make, you. make your money moves now. Right, Joel? See, make your yeah, moves absolutely. Now. See you All next right. week. Take care. Thank you, sir. See you next week. Thanks for joining Joel Nagel and the Global Wealth Fortress Report. A whole new approach to asset protection and estate planning so that now you can live the good life at a great price, where the sun never sets on your financial fortress.